Valar Morgolis, the wise sailor, flees the storm as it gathers. So let's sail both further, since this story isn't over yet. As a matter of fact, it's far from over. There is a lot to be covered in the seasons to come. House of the Dragon Season 2 has been confirmed by HBO, and we'll watch it sooner than we thought. So stay with me until the end, as I have some really interesting news to share with you. Now, let's kick off with a short recap. Aegon called his dream the Song of Ice and Fire, and there will be a lot more ice and a lot more fire in the near future, since the cold days are coming. They are coming so fast, and we must be prepared. Season 1 just ended, and shortly after its premiere, HBO officially renewed House of the Dragon for another season. The pressure is surely big since Game of Thrones set such high standards, but this prequel series took us to the top of it. The penultimate episode will be a hard one to beat. The Princess Rhaenys bursting out on the back of her dragon from under the flagstones. Sensational! But who knew that the finale's very own Grand Dragon moment would savagely top it? Not everyone makes it out alive here, and that is expected, since this is the true style for the Game of Thrones universe. The repercussions that will unfold will be monumental. The first season finished with a bang, or a dragon snap. After 10 episodes, the series introduced us to the three generations of Targaryens, established its core cast, and laid the groundwork for a civil war. The story is set 200 years before Game of Thrones, and the prequel had a huge amount of world building to do. Actually, it still has. Daenerys' ancestors are at the height of their power in Westeros in this timeline, ruling unopposed because there are no alternatives when you are that powerful and exercising a pure monopoly on weapons of mass destruction. You could guess that those are the dragons. Miguel Sopinsnik and Ryan Condal, the showrunners, set the tone since the first episode that offered medieval pageantry, royal plotting, and grisly violence, and a small blonde girl on a dragon. In case you forget that we are still in this world, you can see the Game of Thrones marks from the moon. The ties are immediate and obvious in those early episodes, and starting from Raymond Duarte's iconic theme music. Either way, maybe the first season felt like a slow burn, but the focus on a family already in power and the brand new cast felt fresher. What was the low point according to the critics? Unlike Thrones, Starks the Targaryens make less sympathetic leads. Ned's family stuck together, and they rarely knowingly took up arms against each other, even though circumstances may have divided them. When Targaryens went to Westeros, they decided to preserve their dragon riding abilities via inbreeding, instead of just standing up and protecting their women's rights to rule. Anyway, the civil war is brewing. Because of House of Targaryen's sins, House of the Dragon has gone out of its way to overcome the ick factor of the incest and to hit that like button just like you should if you haven't done so already. No, really. And to make at least some Targaryens likable. And I want to stop talking about the story here and focus on what is coming next. I just want to mention that House of the Dragon established itself as a worthy prequel and forged its own identity after 10 episodes, even though the first few episodes felt too faithful to its predecessor. But thanks to the wildly overqualified cast, strong writing, and a veritable flock of dragons, they did it. The new gods and the old have listened to our prayers. We'll definitely watch another season of House of the Dragon next year, if not more. The confirmation came long ago. As a matter of fact, we got the news just five days after the first episode dropped. Considering the incredible appetite fans seem to have for this spinoff, it's not a surprise that HBO was keen. Between its Sunday premiere and the following Friday, Hoth's first season managed to rack up 20 million viewers, breaking the audience record for any new original series in HBO history. In her most recent interview, Francesca Orsi, HBO's executive vice president of programming, said, We are beyond proud of what the entire House of the Dragon team has accomplished with season one. Our phenomenal cast and crew undertook a massive challenge and exceeded all expectations, delivering a show that has already established itself as a must-see TV. We couldn't be more excited to continue bringing life to the epic saga of House Targaryen with Season 2. But when? When exactly will we watch Season 2? If we take in mind that it took almost one year to produce the first season, it is likely that Season 2 will spill into spring of 2024. Now about the cast. Rhaenyra's boy will not be returning for Season 2, since Vagar took one massive bite out of his dragon Arax and Prince Lucerys. The death will bring massive implications. Unfortunately, 
Paddy Considine won't write his name on the cast list in season 2. Yeah, leaving his squabbling children to cut each other down. King Viserys has hung his crown up on the Iron Throne. Anyway, one person is the most important here, and that is Emma Darcy. She is coming back to reprise her role as Rhaenyra Targaryen, and Queen Alison will continue to bar her way. A significant chunk of the main cast will return. Eve Best Princess Rhaenys and Matt Smith Princess Daemon will be back to fortify Rhaenyra's defenses. Fabian Cole will return as Sir Criston. Cole and Reese Evans will be back as Otto Hightower, respectively, in support of Aegon and Alicent. Yeah, all of the Targons will be back, but new faces may also join the crew. For example, Viserys Targon may be aged up, and Rhaenyra's younger children, Joffrey Valeron. Now, the most important question, what will be the plot of the second season? Well, Rhaenyra makes the fateful choice in the season finale, sending her two oldest sons away from Dragonstone with Luke losing his life in the effort that ends up being a costly decision. Will Jace have the same fate? I don't want to spoil anything, but Rhaenyra sends Jace to meet Lord of Winterfell, Kragen Stark, so his appearance feels like a sure thing for the second season. Unless the show veers wildly off script, we'll spend a lot of time with House Stark this season. And while we talk about Starks, count on some snow in your Season 2 forecast. There's one location near Winterfell. While we're staying in this region, we haven't seen it neither in the eight seasons of Game of Thrones nor in the first season of House of the Dragon. That is White Harbor, the greatest city in the north, governed by the Manderley family of Newcastle. This is a large port city where several denizens worship the fate of the seven. This is a typical because old gods are usually worshipped on the north. We'll probably miss this opportunity to explore the most expensive city of the north. That would be just too big to pass over. The first season ends with Rhaenyra Targon smashing that subscribe button and hitting that notification bell. No really, in all seriousness now. Season 1 ends with Rhaenyra Targon staring at the camera with a war in her eyes, which definitely means that we'll see a lot of blood in Season 2. Putting Damon Ford, the showrunners decided to avoid sharpening Rhaenyra's teeth, even though the desire for fight comes from Rhaenyra in Martin's book. Given what Aemon has just done to her son and her last look in the episode, it is safe to say Rhaenyra will take the gloves off. With House of the Dragon doing a phenomenal job laying those detailed backstories, we have danced into the preamble of the Civil War to come. But I can only see action ahead of us. Things would pan out a little differently this time, and there are still more twists in store for season 2. And what do you expect from the second season? Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.